today we are talking chickens. I know it is a hot topic right now, or I don't know if it's a hot topic as much as it's a big question. People have a lot of questions, comments, and concerns about chicken egg prices. Why are they so dang expensive? Should I be getting my own chickens myself? Would that save me money? Would it make me happier? I'm here to help try to answer those questions for you. Why are chicken eggs so expensive right now? The answer to that is that there are unresolved supply chain issues. So as you can imagine, labor, the cost of supplies, lots of different things that had already contributed to higher egg prices. On top of the fact that there is an avian bird flu going around that is really, really affecting the uh, chicken industry and the turkey industry, which is why turkeys were so expensive in November, uh, if you notice when you're trying to purchase a turkey for Thanksgiving. So that is the reason why things are so expensive right now. If you haven't noticed, the cost of chicken eggs are about eight to $10 for a dozen organic chicken eggs. Personally, I only purchase organic chicken eggs, cage-free eggs. When I am purchasing eggs, especially in the winter time when my chickens have decided to slow down which is totally normal for a chicken if you're new to the chicken world but yeah I only purchased the cage free ones and I'm like yeah this is really expensive right now things are getting a lot more pricey which is why recently we have purchased uh, 10 already hatched chickens we just hatched three of them and we have one hen so we currently have 14 chickens a little bit crazy but it brings us a lot of joy and also you know nourishes our family and i think saves us money too the cost of chicken food is about 12 dollars or so for a 50 pound bag that's not that much considering the amount of eggs that you get when they're like fully laying and, and fully going if you allow them to free range a lot then that cost is going to be a lot lower they're going to get their uh, bugs and nutrients and their vegetation around your property and you can also choose to give them your kitchen scraps to save on the cost of grain so let's talk about why I went down the path to have chickens I believe it was about eight years ago or so and I can't even believe that it's been that long that I've been obsessed with chickens and that I've been like a chicken tender of sorts they're just really kooky and really interesting they give you back so much not only just the eggs but they're really 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 good pets I saw a picture of a silky bantam chicken I thought it was the most interesting looking creature I've ever seen before I'll post a picture somewhere in here of the silky bantam uh, silky bantams actually have black skin turquoise ears their uh, feathers aren't necessarily like regular feathers they're kind of like these shredded uh, almost like a Pomeranian type chicken so I just saw that picture and I was like I have to have this I need chickens in my life right now at the time my husband was my boyfriend and he was just like okay you know whatever let's go get chickens I just kept going down this path of like I need chickens I'm already vegetable gardening so I want a bigger garden I can't live in the city anymore now I want some land and I want to get out there and live off the grid and it was like a whole series of events you know kind of unfolding after that so be careful because chickens are kind of like a gateway window into homesteading and now we live on about three close to three acres and uh, we're just kind of building this little homestead so that's kind of how the whole chicken journey started and it's really carved a path into my life that i would not change for the world let's walk out to the big coop oh my gosh it's sunny i will give you a quick tour then we'll kind of start getting on into it so this coop is it's pretty big as you can see it's like as tall as me we put an enclosure on the top so that they would um, stay dry in the rain and it's got these uh, sliding or opening doors this was a dog cage before when uh, the prior owners they actually would have their I think it was like some type of hound dogs in here so it's definitely suitable for a lot of chickens we have a cement ground and we also have a chicken run with some dirt. So when it's raining, they can either decide to stay on the cement ground and stay totally dry. And they can also have the option to do their little sand baths over there, get some sun, 
she's actually out of the coop right now that's blue so they've got their options they're pretty lucky chickens Oof. we also have these two uh, little brooding boxes behind me i'll show you a close up that is if uh, other chickens aren't getting along and sometimes chickens just decide hey i'd rather lay here and we have those on cement blocks these are the main chicken houses my chicken prefers for us to keep this open so that she can perch here that's just her preference so that's why we continue to do that um, otherwise it could be closed no eggs because it is the winter time here are the chicken feeders we have some water off the ground which needs to be refilled and a messy messy feeder a messy chicken who keeps picking all of her treats out of all of the good stuff I as you can see when I feed them I put regular chicken feed in there but then I also put some bird seed in there some corn and I also put mealworms in there and she's just having a heyday right now uh, picking all the stuff out and kicking it onto the ground my biggest recommendation is get a no mess no waste chicken feeder because that's going to save you a ton of money in the long run it's not a super big deal right now for us because we just have the one big hen eating out of it and it's falling on cement so unless she's gone to the bathroom on her food we can just scoop it up and put it right back in but if you have one of these hanging feeders or just a feeder in general uh, that they can kick all the food out onto dirt and it gets wet then you're wasting a lot of money over time on chicken food so uh, that's one of our next investments is going to be like a no waste chicken feeder it is a little bit of an investment because i want to buy like a steel one that is um just as opposed to plastic, I just want to invest in, in good stuff. So that's my first tip. There are three main ways to buy chickens or go about acquiring chickens. The first way would be to purchase a full grown hen from somebody who's you know breeding chickens, selling them. Right now, we'll go over some pros and cons of that. The biggest pro is you're pretty much guaranteed to be buying a hen if that's what you're seeking or a rooster if that's what you're seeking from uh, those chicken breeders when you're hatching a chicken you don't know what you're going to get and you don't want to end up with like six roosters and four hens for example that's the biggest benefit to buying a chicken already hatched and already grown it saves you a lot of time it saves you about five months of waiting four or five months because that chicken breeder has hatched them raised them and you're buying them as a almost ready layer or already laying hen uh, so you're good to go ready to get started and start harvesting your own eggs from your coop. The con is it's going to be more expensive. It's about $20, $25 a hen to purchase uh, from one of those breeders. They have spent a lot of money on feed and time and investment. And also, hey, they want to make a few dollars as well at the end of the day. So you're basically paying for saving a bunch of time. So that's kind of like the pros and cons of buying adult chickens ready to go. I will note not all chicken breeds are going to lay every day uh, if you want a certain breed that's going to be a heavy egg layer definitely do your research and usually the cooler breeds the more ornamental breeds like a silky or um, even like an easter egg or olive egg or for example they're not going to lay every day each breed has a different amount of eggs that they're going to lay and also the eggs are going to be different sizes different colors all of that let's talk about the most affordable way to start your flock which also happens to be the longest journey on starting your flock hatching your chicken eggs yourself so there's a lot of different ways you can do this so many ways you can have a neighbor who has fertilized eggs I've even heard of certain grocery store chains that are more likely to have fertilized eggs on their shelves that could potentially be hatched into chicks I've heard it's possible. I don't know if it is. Or you can buy chicken eggs online that are fertilized and have them shipped to your house. And you can hatch them yourself. The problem with that is it's not cheap depending on the type of breed that you are looking to hatch. It's still anywhere from about like $3 or so per egg. 
and not every egg is guaranteed to hatch and sometimes when they hatch unfortunately not all of them make it or it could be that you purchased a bunch of eggs they all hatch and they all make it where in that case it's it's a good investment and then at that point you're just thinking about time it takes about i think it was 27 days or so to hatch a chicken egg from there once they've hatched you're looking at another four to five months before they start laying eggs. I'll show you my three chickens that we have hatched recently in October. As of right now, they're about, I think 14 weeks, 12 weeks, I don't know. They're about, it's January right now. So they're about 12 weeks old, I have to do the math. I got a kind of like mystery rare breed flock, which, we got this little frizzled beauty. Oh my goodness. I have a, such a soft spot for frizzles because they're absolutely, look at that thing. So beautiful and cute. What is there not to love? I don't even know what type of chicken this is. It's looking like it's a hen as well. It has feathered feet, which I love that type of characteristic. We hatched this from the same uh, whole like hatching group. Then we have the world's smallest chicken, which is a Sarama. And I'm hoping that it's a rooster. These ones are really cool. They get like the size of a, a soda can. They're super tiny and they look like little sergeants when they walk around. Their um, rooster crow is super, super quiet in comparison to a regular rooster. So that's why I wanted just like one Sarama rooster, just so I could have a rooster in the pack, but not, have to listen to a rooster all the time that's like super boastful and loud onto my office is a little bit dirty we're like cleaning up in here after christmas and this is kind of like the holiday overflow but on to my so far favorite way to acquire chickens for raising and having eggs i went on tractor supply store just to see uh, on their website if they had any like uh, freshly hatched chickens because they do sell day old chickens a lot from my understanding they're usually kind of like turkey type breeds or like your standard breed uh, chicken, just a regular kind of like egg layer type breed. Not a lot of like special breed options if you're just going into tractor supply store. So I was gonna go on their website to see like what they had and I was like, I just wanna get some chickens, just start raising them in general. I don't care what the breed is at this point. I started poking around and I saw that they actually sell already hatched chickens. And you can buy already hatched chickens from a number of different websites but I just so happened to have gone on Tractor Supply Store. And I picked out like a rare breed mix. I'll see if I can put it on here, what I picked out. So it's a whole mix, you don't know what you're gonna get. And they ship out the chickens either Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday. That's what they, it says on the, on the website. I'm sure this stuff can change all the time. But they shipped out the chickens basically almost on Thursday. And the chickens got here from Michigan, the already hatched chicks, within 24 hours. Like they were here Friday morning. I was ready to pick them up from the post office as soon as they, I was looking at the tracking number, as soon as they were delivered. I went to the post office. There was no mistaking that there was baby chicks in the post office making a whole ruckus. They were upset, I'm sure cold, wanted food, water. I raced home and I set them up with just a little makeshift uh, brooder box until we get their um, big brooder all set up and predator proof. I ordered these 10 baby chicks. As you can see, they're cute, cute, cute. I think they're, oh, well, there's one hiding right here too. I'll show one. So I ordered the 10 baby chicks. They were here really, really quickly. They were all healthy. I was reading the reviews. Some people said that, you know, um, so most people said that they did really well and some people said that they didn't. And I was just really hoping that they were all gonna be really healthy and they are all super healthy and happy. As soon as I got them under a heat lamp and it was some food and water, they, they barely make any noise now. So that was about $50 for, uh, it was like $50 almost exactly with the shipping for the 10 chickens. They're already sexed supposedly. So that means, they said that it's a 90% chance you could have all females, which is what I ordered. So I'm sure there might be a rooster in there, we don't know, but fingers crossed, they're all hens. I really like this method because I feel like for about $5 a hen, 
that's pretty good odds as opposed to having to go through the whole effort of uh, hatching an egg. It could be a boy. You don't know. It could be a rooster unless maybe you want a rooster. You don't know when you're hatching eggs what you're going to get if it's going to be a, a rooster or a hen and you don't know how many of them are going to successfully hatch. If you haven't had baby chicks before, what you'll want is to have them in like a brooder. These definitely don't have anywhere near uh, feathers or anything like that to be outside. They need heat right now. They are um, just fuzz as of this point. So they need a heating, uh, a heating lamp and water and food at all times. This is the heating lamp. I don't even know what it's, this is the one that we're using. It's working really well. I just have them in like a cardboard Amazon box. I quickly threw some wood chips down there. I have some food over there that I need to refill and a baby chick water, water feeder. I have it on a plate upside down so that it can minimize how much of the, um, the wood chips get uh, kicked into there because uh, they do have a tendency to kick wood chips in their water especially when they're this little. So you definitely want to make sure that you're not getting a water container that is really large because you don't want them to drown in there. So you want to get the little tiny baby one. But so far, so good. But that kind of concludes basically the three different ways that you can purchase chickens. Of course, you can just be gifted chickens from a neighbor, <laughs> that would be awesome. Or you can have your own hens and roosters that lay their own eggs and, that are fertilized and your hen can actually, you know, hatch chickens if she is the type of breed that will do that. Not all chicken breeds have done that. Some chicken breeds that has been bred out of them. A really good breed to hatch chickens would be like a silky bantam. They really love hatching chickens and um, they're really good moms and dads. Yeah, those are the most free options. This is the incubator that I use. Just so you can see, it's a pretty heavy duty incubator. One of those little tabletop ones will work just fine. Uh, this one will hatch a lot, a lot of chickens at one time. Now is the best time to incorporate chickens in your life if it's something that you've been considering. There are a few extra chores involved with it, but really it's not any more than owning a cat or a dog, I, I think, in my opinion. The best thing to do is get a coop that is set up really well, predator proof, uh, no waste type feeders and hanging water feeders. The better of a system you have set up, the less of a headache you're gonna have when you're raising these chickens. So that pretty much concludes it for today. Thank you for listening to me ramble and everything. Hopefully in the spring we will have lots and lots of chicken eggs from our 14 chickens and I'll be either giving them away, selling them as a side business, I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So thanks for watching, until next time.